Welcome back to the next video in the series, and the focus upon this one will be about the respiratory portion or the medicine section for the AKT. Again, expect up to about 20 questions directly related to respiratory medicine for your exam. To make things simpler, we're going to focus on two high yield subjects within this, COPD and asthma. So let's dive straight in. NICE guidance suggests to consider a diagnosis of COPD in anyone over 35 with significant smoking history, breathlessness, a chronic cough or sputum production. To aid diagnosis of COPD, a post-bronchodilator lung function spirometry should show evidence of an FEV1, which is forced expiratory volume up to one second, over forced vital capacity, FVC, of less than 70%. Additionally, chest x-rays would show classic hyperinflation and flattened diaphragms. Blood tests, particularly the full blood count, is often done to rule out a secondary polycythemia, and also to show evidence of azonophilia, which has a role in deciding treatment, which we'll come back to. With all this, we can categorise the severity of COPD according to the FEV1. Stage 1 is mild, where it's above 80%. Stage 2 is moderate, between 50 and 79%. Stage 3 is severe, between 30 and 49%. And stage 4 is very severe, than 30%. It should be noted, however, that even mild diagnosis would need the presence of symptoms. The main crux for COPD, however, is its management. We start off with routine community work, which includes smoking sensation, where NICE recommend the offering of nicotine replacement therapy or drug therapy to anyone interested. Nicotine replacement therapy comes in a multitude of forms and often is first line, but vanracycline is a partial nicotine receptor agonist, which is an alternative, but is contraindicated in pregnancy with caution advice to those with depression or self-harm. It most commonly causes headaches, GI upset and insomnia as its side effects. Bupropion is an alternative, but it's thought to be less effective than the other two options above. It's a noradrenaline dopamine reuptake inhibitor, and it's contraindicated in pregnancy and in epilepsy. Patients should also be offered an annual flu vaccine and a one-off pneumococcal vaccine with pulmonary rehab for those with an MRC grade 3 breathlessness or worse. Initial medical therapy starts with a short-acting beta agonist, a SABA, or a SAMA, which is a short-acting muscarinic antagonist. The next step, however, depends on whether a patient is either steroid responsive or has asthmatic features, which is defined as a secure diagnosis of asthma, or atopy, is on affiliate on the full blood count, an FEV1 variation, including diurnal variation, or any previous severe exacerbations or two times moderate exacerbations. If neither of these are fulfilled, the next step is to offer a LABA plus LAMA, a long-acting version of both. If, however, there are, then the next step will be a LABA plus inhaled corticosteroid. Maximising the doses here is essential. The next steps after this are basically tailored to the patient's symptoms and often come under specialist respiratory care. Oral theophylins can be used, but they're usually initiated and after the above has been fulfilled or the patient is not tolerated to inhaled therapies. Prophylactic antibiotics, such as azithromycin, can be considered in some patients, but often extra investigations to rule out other causes, such as bronchiectasis and atypical infections, such as TB, would need to be taken. If a patient has evidence of considerable right-heart-sided strain, a diagnosis of core pulmonale would need to be considered, with diuretics and or long-term oxygen therapy required. Mucolytics, such as carbocysteine, are also utilised if sputum production is a problem. As mentioned before, however, smoking cessation is really the only prognostic intervention you can really deliver for your patients here. However, in some cases, long-term oxygen therapy, or LTOT, can be considered in patients who have chronic hypoxemia. This would usually qualify for people with severe COPD. LTOT is offered to patients with a PO2 of less than 7.3, or less than 8, plus one of the following, secondary polycythemia, peripheral edema, or pulmonary hypertension. But they shouldn't be offered to the people who continue to smoke and it's usually prescribed for at least 15 hours a day. If this video is exactly the kind of material you want to see, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. I've had a lot of encouraging support and positive feedback from subscribers so far and a quick thank you to those guys already. And for those who haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Moving on to asthma, the other big component for the respiratory management for the AKT. NICE updated their guidance for asthma diagnosis in 2017, following on from the BTS guidance a year prior. Adult patients should be questioned as to whether they have an occupational element to their symptoms, but otherwise all subjects should have a bronchodilator spirometry for diagnosis, with fractional exhaled nitric oxide testing, the latter of which is a new change, which is also required. 
It relies on the fact that there's a specific subtype of nitric oxide, particularly correlated to inflammation as they're often risen in conjunction with azonophils. A positive test would be reversibility of FEV1 by 12% or 200 milliliters, and a pheno of about 40 parts per billion. Patients under 5, however, the diagnosis is based upon clinical judgment, with objective measurements and tests held until they're 5 years old. The treatment of asthma begins with step 1, a SABA, step 2, a SABA plus ICS, step 3, a SABA plus ICS plus a leukotriene receptor antagonist, step 4, a SABA plus ICS plus a LABA plus or minus a leukotriene receptor antagonist depending on the response, step 5 is a SABA and maintenance and reliever therapy with a LABA ICS in 1 with or without a leukotriene receptor antagonist, and step 6 is a SABA plus a moderate dose MARP therapy but step 7 usually requiring a referral to secondary care that includes a SABA plus or minus leukotriene receptor antagonist and a maximum dose MART therapy. It's worth noting that when patients are stable for 3 months, it's worth considering a step down in their treatment. Additionally, for children under 5 however, the treatment is as follows. Step 1, a SABA. Step 2, a SABA plus 8 weeks of moderate dose ICS. And depending on the response to that, a consideration of lowering the ICS or repeating a further 8 weeks or on to step 3 is taken, with step 3 being a SABA plus a low-dose ICS plus a leukotriene receptor antagonist. After that, it really requires a referral to the paediatric respiratory team. The final topic here is how we're going to manage an acute asthma exacerbation. It's important to categorise the patient as to whether you're seeing them as a moderate, severe or life-threatening presentation. Moderate patients will show peak flow of above 50% with normal speech, no tachycardia or no tachypnea. And these patients would often need nebulized or spaced salbutamol in higher doses of steroids with a consideration for admission. Severe patients would have a peak flow between 33 and 50%, unable to complete the sentences with tachycardia and tachypnea. These patients you would need to consider for admission as well as the treatment outlined above. Life-threatening patients, however, are a medical emergency, and their peak flow is less than 33%. They're usually hypoxic with SATs less than 92%, with cardiac dysregularity, and exhausted with a silent chest. They need an emergency admission. The emergency inpatient treatment will often require chest imaging and arterial blood gas management to rule out any other differentials, with supplemental oxygen, nebulized beta agonists, corticosteroids, antimuscarinics all considered. Magnesium sulfate and IV aminophilin are also given at this stage. However, there's a low threshold for these patients to be discussed at level 2 or level 3 care for organ support. And that's that. I hope this video has helped your understanding of COPD and asthma management in respiratory medicine in the AKT prep. Be sure to comment, like and subscribe and please follow us on Facebook as well. But otherwise, good luck with the revision and I'll see you in the next video.